We talk a lot about public lands here in New Mexico. Those lands hold different meanings for different people, including each of the state's more than 20 American Indian tribes. On this month's episode of Our Land, correspondent Laura Pascas talks with a former governor of the Pueblo of Cochiti, Tribal Councilman Eugene Herrera, about the Pueblo's relationship with the landscape and its opposition to a popular bill in Congress that would expand public lands near Cochiti. Councilman Herrera, welcome to the studio today. Good morning. So on one of our recent episodes of Our Land, we focused on public lands, lands that are open to everyone, for everyone to access. But I would imagine that for Pueblo people here in New Mexico, that's a little bit of a different um, idea. These might be ancestral homelands that are now national forests or national monuments that are controlled by federal managers and can be changed through an act of Congress. I was wondering if you could um, help us and help our audience understand what landscapes and, and public lands mean for the Pueblo of Cochiti. Well, public lands, my first inclination to the way it feels to the Native Americans is that it's alive. It's our mother. It provided for us since time millennium back, and it'll be there providing for us if we allow it to. And um, right now we can see some of the calamities involved, and um, hopefully we can straighten some of them out to give her a better fighting chance to survive and do her job, and in turn let us do her our job in stewardship, stewardship and protecting her and encouraging her to a more livelihood. Right. So recently, Senator Martin Heinrich introduced a bill that would change Bandelier National Monument into Bandelier National Park. And many of the Pueblos in the state have said that they support this bill, but the Pueblo of Cochiti does not. Can you talk about what your concerns are with this bill? Well, primary, our primary concern is that it is the traditional and aboriginal home to the Pueblo de Cochiti and, uh, and maybe primarily to the Kerish tribes here. And it is located on our migration routes. It is probably about the last place that we set all as one people before moving to our permanent locations. So it has a lot of significance there. It has been provided with a lot of spiritual and sacred sites to help maintain our cultural way of life. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, the bill would open up about 4,300 acres um, to hunting that currently are within the monument. Um, what are your worries with that? Well, obviously it's an influx of people and the crowds anytime you get something redesignated from a national monument to a national park, we're looking at maybe a hundredfold increase in crowds. So, you know, there's been numerous fires in the location, so the environment is in a very fragile and uh, infancy stage. It's, it's coming back to life right now, and so it has to be properly taken care of. So, and I apologize if this is too personal, but can you talk about, um, um, your relationship with that landscape um, or the relationship that other people from the Pueblo of Cochiti have with that landscape, either in terms with the wildlife that's there or the, the spaces, the landscape, like why it's so important that it be protected. Yes, a lot of our holy people still go into these areas. We go in there for pilgrimage. There, we have numerous like I said, s sacred sites in there. We have old villages in there. Uh, the last mesa where we made our last stand against the Vargas is in the immediate location. So it has a lot of very significant, you know, significance to us as uh, Pueblo people in our struggles, in our lives. And it has so much meaning to us that it helps us maintain our way of life. These days, as you can see, since the first point of contact about five, six hundred years ago, and where the American Indian is now today, and what do you picture it to be in another five hundred years? Is there going to be these sites there available for our children to help maintain their way of life and to keep their way of life? And you have to remember, these places are there 
as a aid in helping us protect ourselves, help, helping us identify ourselves. If we lose that as, for instance, going into the national park, it's going to inhibit us from going in there as freely and as uh, privately as we normally would like to. So that's going to be a big problem for us. But it's also an ident identification purposes for our younger people, as you can see. Like I said, in the past 500 years, we're on the verge of losing our language right now. And if we lose more, then where are we going to be here in another 500 years? Mm -hmm. And the, that landscape has, like you mentioned, been impacted by fires, including some really big, severe fires. How has that affected the wildlife there and your relationship with the wildlife and, and your reliance on wildlife? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we normally go up there for bows, for ceremonials, and our holy people go there for herbs to help take care of the people and the whole world. And in essence, no, we pray for all people. We pray for our enemies. We pray for you. We pray for people across the world. We help our mother to stay alive. And that's our primary concern. So we're, we're trying our best. And hopefully we can get this message across to other people. Is that it's alive and it's vibrant. It's breathing. So the bill, as introduced, would also include a tribal commission. Um, is that a step forward? Um, the federal government is already supposed to consult with tribes on issues like these. So um, your thoughts on the tribal commission that would be a part of this bill? I don't know the vitality of it or how much power it would have, because uh, the final the final okay for any suggestions that a public commission could suggest um, still can be overwritten by the Secretary of the Interior. So if, the, if they could give it more meat, maybe, I don't know. So do you feel like, um, and I know you're speaking just for the Pueblo of Cochiti, but do you feel like when there are these sort of big issues that happen, whether it's a, a bill related to a national monument and landscapes or, or other issues that affect tribes, do you feel like you have a voice and a say and a seat at the table? Um, how, how does that work? Um, speaking of seat at the table, I think that's what may have brought some of the problems about here for Cochiti is, um, there was really no major prior consultation or, or anybody coming to the village saying, hey, we're going to propose this. Senator Martin Heinrich came to the Pueblo de Cochiti in 2017 when I was serving my first term as governor. And he made no mention of it to us. And the leadership in 2018 was given the burden of having to address it at that time. We sent in some protest letters at that time. And then I became uh, governor again in 2019. I was appointed, so we started pursuing it again. And, mm -hmm. and here we are again now, still talking about it. Right. And Cochiti tribal officials recently went to Washington, D.C. Um, to, to talk with uh, folks about the bill, um, what would you like to see happen? Um, are there changes to the bill, or do you just hope that it doesn't pass? What would you like to see? I would like to see it not pass. I would like to see it derailed if it could. I think um, it needs to be readdressed, maybe through the all public council of governors, and do it the proper way. You know, they need to listen to our voice. Um, I know uh, they're claiming that there's a majority of the Pueblos are in favor of it, but there's some that are not, and it's primarily the 10 Southern Governors Council that we've opposed it. We've sent in letters of support to Cochiti Pueblo, so we stand there now, and that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Are there any positives to the bill or anything that it, how it could be changed that might make uh, the Pueblo of Cochiti more comfortable with the bill? 
I don't think there's any room for compromise because it's, uh, like I said, there's reverence from the Pueblo and other tribes for that area. We have so many close spiritual connections to it. Like I said, it's probably our last gathering home. Right. And are you, is the Pueblo, I was looking at a map and the, the Pueblo of Cochiti is um, cl closest to this area, is that right, than some of the other Pueblos? Right. Okay. There's a stone throw maybe about a mile to the southern boundary. It, it borders up against our reservation to the newly purchased Cañada de Cochiti, which we purchased. So we have, um, we have that going on. We're trespassing and other issues. We have two monuments adjacent to the reservation. We have Cachacatui on the west, and we see the problems with crowding there and we can imagine what we can see if Bandelier were to turn into a national park. Right. Um, and my last question for you is, what do you wish that people in New Mexico better understood about the relationship that the Pueblo of Cochiti has with these landscapes? That it's there to provide a healthy way of life for everybody on this world, and that we go there to help pray for all people and we don't want that broken. If that's broken, then we'll, what's going to happen? We're going to have to fend for ourselves. And it's going to be chaotic at that time. But right now, we have the sources there that we'd like to keep intact since the millennium. It's been there. It was given to us by the Creator to help us maintain it and keep the world in harmony with peace and we'd like to see it pursued along them lines. Mm. Councilman Herrera, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to give Cochiti Pueblo's perspective. Thank you.